Hey you guys, it's Kaylee. I wanted to come on real quick because after making that video about how to make consistent eBay sales on eBay and Poshmark, I've been getting a lot of comments asking about how to check the sell-through rate of items. I did make a video all about checking the sell-through rate. It's a very detailed video and it goes over basically how to in-depth do that on eBay with some examples um, and then some tips and tricks for eBay sell-through rate. But that video also talks about how to basically comp and do other things. So I wanted to make a really quick video because so many people are reaching out and asking how to check sell-through rate. You can check sell-through rate on pretty much any app. It's just that the easiest way to do it is on eBay. So if I was just selling on Poshmark, I would still probably still check my sell-through rate over on eBay just because it makes things so much easier. So when you are searching something on the eBay app, it's going to give you how many available results there are. Whereas with like Poshmark and I think even on Mercari, at least on Poshmark, I know it does not give you the amount of results that they're showing you. You would have to actually go through and individually count how many. So for instance, if you searched women's Zara skirt on Poshmark and there's 500 results, you would have to actually physically count how many results there are to help you calculate the sell-through rate versus when you go on eBay and search the same thing, it's going to say there are 500 available searches that match what you've asked for. And so that's why I would suggest going on eBay to check for your sell-through rate if that's something that you want to do, which I highly suggest you do. Sell-through rate's really important because it is going to um, allow you to really hone in on only picking up items that are going to sell quickly. A lot of people calculate sell-through rate differently, but when it comes to whether you're going to pick up an item or not, what I basically do, and I'll include a screenshot here, is if I am going to search for an item, first of all, I'm going to be extremely, extremely specific. I'm not just going to look up express men's jeans. I'm going to look up express men's slim jeans dark wash, possibly. So you want to be very specific with what you are trying to pick up. But just for an example, let's use Rock Revival. There's a train going by as I'm trying to film this. Sorry if you can hear that. If I was going to look up for this example, men's Rock Revival Hank jeans. That's what came to mind because it's a style I've sold before. I would go on to the eBay app, type into the search bar as if I were a customer, Rock Revival Men's Hank Jeans, and then I would filter to pre-owned, if I indeed had a pre-owned item, which if you are trying to thrift and flip onto these sites, typically you are picking up pre-owned items, so I'm just in the habit of always filtering to pre-owned. That way you only get search results for the same kind of item that you are looking for. It is so important to be very specific. Then after I have searched, I'm going to take note of the available sold listings at the bottom of my screen, which I will circle and point to here. And then from that, so make a mental note in your head, and then you're going to go to sold. So you'll also be filtering through that whole section. You're gonna hit sold, which will do completed solds. And then you're going to take note of that number of available search results. And then from there, you can, if you decide you wanna pick up the item, you would scroll through to decide what you're gonna price the item for based on a similar styles, washes, things like that. A good sell-through rate, in my own opinion, just so you know, just for full transparency, people calculate sell-through rate differently. When you're looking at the available solds on eBay, it will only show you the most recent 90-day sales, so it only looks back 90 days. So you're not going to see a whole year's worth of stuff. You're going to be able to see what's available currently for sale, and then you're going to be able to see the last 90 days of sold completed listings. Now the reason sell-through rate is calculated differently um, when you are using the eBay app method is because of that 90-day time period. Some people try to 
divide by three and then only use, you know, that against the available listings. Some people take, you know, the sold listings and they add it to the available listings because it was once available and now it's sold. Don't get too confused by that. I think that when it comes to picking up an item to sell and to check on the sell through rate, all you really need to do is see, does the amount of solds, is that close enough or more than the amount that's available? And if you're really specific when you do these searches, again, you include the style or you know, if it's a sweater, you're including whether it's turtleneck or it's long sleeve or possibly even what color or what print it is or does it have cable in it. When you are searching very specifically with those key features, you are going to get a narrowed down search result and you are going to be very honed in on what the item is actually going to sell, sell for and then also what that actual sell through rate is. If you're just searching, Banana Republic sweater, you're going to get a lot of search results. So make sure when you are trying to check a sell through rate that you're being very specific in search. That is probably the most important tip when it comes to sell through rate. So what's important is if there are 100 available listings for your search terms, then when you go to check the pre-owned solds, is there about 100 that have sold? That's what you wanna look for. Forget about the 90 days, don't do any calculations just for the specific purpose of whether you're going to pick up an item or not. Don't make it any harder than it needs to be. Is the amount that has sold close enough to the amount that's available? If it's just a few under, then I usually still pick it up. If it's right at, I pick it up. And then obviously if it's more, so let's say there's 100 available for sale, but 200 have sold in the sold completed listings. And that to me means that that is an amazing sell through rate and more are selling than what people are listing. So it's basically as soon as you list an item, that's going to fly out the door. When it comes to sell through rate, when you're going to price your item, something to keep in mind is that if an item has a bad sell through rate, you are going to want to price lower than your competitors probably. What that means is that because there are so many available and so many sellers are selling that same item, then you've got a lot of competition. It's not already a desirable item to begin with. Typically, you're going to have to price your item a little bit lower than your competitors to get the item to sell. And if you are basically right on the mark, let's say there's 100 listed, about 100 have sold, then you know you can price pretty much in the middle along with the rest of the sellers. If the item has an outstanding sell through rate, then sometimes you can price a little higher. I still try to stay in the middle, but you know, that's how I look for pricing on sell through rate. Sell through rate is very important, not only when you're sourcing, but also when you're pricing. So that's kind of my method. Somebody asked, you know, okay, so I'm, I'm doing my sold and I looked up this, this is the amount of search results I got, but you know, it ranges on the solds from I think the example they said was like 25 to 40. If that's the case and you're seeing such a large range, then I don't think that you are searching and drilling down specifically enough to get the correct sold results. Because if you were, I don't think you would see such a significant range. And if even if you have done everything and that's the case, then I would look for, you know, items with the most similar features to yours. If an item has really special features and it has a good sell through rate, sometimes I add a few dollars to it um, because I know it's going to sell quickly and then because I know mine's more unique or has better features. For example, if I've got a pair of, let's just say, American Eagle jeans and that specific style sells very well, let's say the sell through rate is outstanding, so I pick it up knowing that it's going to sell well. When I go to price the item, if I know that it sells well but mine has holes or maybe it has a special cuff or a certain pattern stitching, I might price mine maybe $5 higher than that because I know it has a good sell through rate and because it has unique features that other sellers might not have. I hope all of that makes sense. This is just a little rambling, but because I had so many questions about sell through rates, if you don't want to go watch that very long video about how to check comp solds and all of that, this video is for you. I hope that clears up any confusion, but that is basically how you check sell through rate and how you use 
sell through reach your advantage when you are outsourcing and also pricing your items. I make all kinds of content about reselling, selling items that I pick up at thrift stores for cheap and I flip them on sites like eBay and Poshmark to make a profit. If you're not already subscribed and you're interested in learning more about reselling, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you get notified when I make new content. I do lots of thrift hauls and also what sold videos. Sometimes we even do thrift with me's and just fun little lifestyle things. So make sure to click those two buttons if you would like to be notified as new videos become available. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up on the way out if you did like this content. That way I know to continue making more educational videos like this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.